Hey guys, so I went ahead and I broke up all the different steps that we are going to be taking to get this to work into hopefully smaller videos. So hopefully we'll have um, uh, smaller videos that, you know, aren't a whole hour long each. And you can see a list of all the upcoming videos right here. Of course, this might change because this is a living roadmap, but whatever. So right now we are going to do a very small video and we're going to make some small changes to the base project. And I also want to take a moment and talk about one of the things that uh, I kind of had issues with while doing some of this R&D. Um, I'm starting to have some issues with the, uh, the, the ability to allow certain things to be running without a server. And it has to do with some of the decisions that I made early on such as using a, a different class for the client systems between the server and the client. I didn't want to duplicate a bunch of logic. I actually see a way to do it a lot better, but that would require more time to be spent in the base project to do things we've already done. So moving forward, what we're going to do is we are going to get this just working with uh, straight up with the live server or with the actual Photon server. And we're going to write it in a way that uh, I will be forward thinking about how I'm going to refactor this stuff in the future. But then in, you know, once we get to the ability for people to move around and, and maybe have some combat, then we'll take a step back and actually refactor out our systems. Now, I did say that this was going to be something that we I can't remember which video it was it was like 10 videos ago 15 videos ago that we were going to be merging the client and server systems implementation into a single base class uh, or base set of classes I already did say that so basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the ability to run things without the server uh, for testing purposes and for quick feedback and I'm pushing it up to when we actually go and rewrite the or rework the systems interface. And I think that makes a whole lot more sense because at the end of the day, we'll be spending less time refactoring if we do it all in one sort of big thing. So again, um, that's where we are now. So we're going to be moving forward, working against the live server. Um, so yeah, in this video, we're just going to make a quick few changes to the base project. Uh, again, very, very short video. I just wanted to really outline the fact that we are moving some of the things up. And uh, I, I wanted to finish as much as I can. See, I don't know if I will make changes to the base later down in these other videos. Um, I might, I might not. But I just want to... I just want to get out of this project as soon as possible. I, I, I really want to get into the Unity project, so I wanted to isolate this into its own video. Anyway, um, again, uh, these changes are just forward thinking for the refactorings that I want to make uh, in a future video. Uh, the biggest thing I want to do here is I want to go into, uh, I want to make two changes here. I want to go into the client transport. And for the disconnect, I, I, first of all, the client transport, I want to have the interface have the concept of connecting and disconnecting. And that way we can write our code against this interface inside of our client and not have to write our code against the Photon client transport. Because remember, the Photon client transport has a bunch of things like connect and service and disconnect and all that fun stuff. Well, disconnect is on the interface. But we need to be able to invoke these methods from within Unity, but I don't want to have a hard dependency on this particular class. I want to depend simply on the interface. So I also want to change disconnect to be deferred. So let's go ahead and make those changes. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to write, um, change the, uh, the return type here to deferred for disconnect. And then I'm going to add a deferred connect method. And then I'm also, in between these, I'm going to have a, a, a void service method. So now we can just reference the iClient transport directly instead of referencing the Photon Client transport, which makes our code uh, a lot nicer. Since I did add these methods, we will have some errors. Now, a question would be, uh, for the Photon Client Transport, let's go ahead and fix this guy first, because this guy is now broken, because he no longer has the proper disconnect. I don't know why I'm not getting an error here. I should be. Maybe I have to hit F6, and maybe ReSharper is, uh, is having a bad day. Probably is. But um, I do know, however, the changes I need to make to the Photon Client Transport. Well, and to the Client Transport base. Let's do the Client Transport base first. Oh, that's where it's yelling at me at. Okay, for the client transport base, I'm going to come down here to public virtual disconnect, uh, and I'm going to change it to deferred disconnect, and I'm simply going to return deferred.success. So basically, it'll always, when you use a client transport base, the, the default behavior will always succeed. And then I'm also going to do a public virtual deferred connect. And this guy will do the same thing. He'll simply return deferred.success. And then I'll also do a public 
uh, virtual void update, or did I call it service? Or I think I called it service. Service, and I'll just leave that as empty. So now the client transport base has a default, good default behavior for these these two additional methods in this one this one changed method. Uh, let's jump up here to the top to make sure that we got that all implemented, and we did. Now the photon client transport is going to be a little bit more interesting. Um, for example, so the connect is uh, is now going to return a deferred. And the disconnect is going to return a deferred. And also the connect is going to be an override. And um, the service is now going to be an override. But now we have some problems. Uh, first of all, we're not returning anything. Second of all, though, our connect method takes in a server address and an application. Now, fortunately, we already made a type that kind of encapsulates this information. And I want to change our photon client transport so it accepts this as a constructor parameter as opposed to connect. I think that that's a better architect, uh, architectural decision. And it further allows us to use iPhoton peer listener in place of photon client transport, or, or sorry, um, I, I, I client transport as opposed to photon client transport in many more cases. So I'm going to add a constructor parameter here. It's simply going to be a photon server connection, and we're going to call it connection. And I'll alias that out into a local field or store it into a local field. I'll move that down. Uh, maybe move it there so it's sorted properly. And um, for a connect, this is going to be interesting. Um, for the disconnect, I'm simply going to return uh, deferred.success. I'm not going to bother doing any deferred magic here. Now, connect, I am going to fix this first. I am going to go ahead and nuke its parameters and instead do connection.address and connection.application name. But for its deferred, what we have to do is we have to create a deferred and then return it when our status changed uh, changes to uh, connected. So to do that, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a um, a private deferred. Now I'm not going to have this be a read-only property, as you'll see why in a second, and it's going to be called a uh, uh, connect deferred. And then down in the connect method, what we're going to do is we're going to say, whoops, that's not right at all. We're going to say connect deferred equals new deferred. And then we're simply going to return connect deferred. Come on, Resharper. There you go. Okay, so now we need to be able to resolve this deferred when the connection actually happens. So we do that down here in our on status changed. Um, after we establish the transport status, I'm gonna say if transport status um, equals uh, connected or uh, status code connect, or no, um, client transport status connected dirt, we're gonna say connect deferred dot set result true null. And then in addition to this, after we do the set result, I think I'm going to go ahead and do something else here. I think I'm going to go ahead and set connect deferred back to null. And that way it'll release whatever, whatever memory is being captured by the delegates that get added in to the, the deferred object. So once it's connected, we just set it back, uh, set the connect deferred back to null. Um, in the cases of a reconnect, I could also come in here and say if connect deferred does not equal null, or maybe I can add that in here to this uh, if statement. If uh, connect deferred does not equal null. So the, the reason I'm doing that here is in the case of a reconnect, what would happen is um, we would not re-invoke the connect deferred again. So the connect deferred is only going to be resolved once it's successfully connected and not afterwards. So yeah, that makes our iClient transport a lot nicer and cleaner and uh, along the same lines of what we're going to be seeing once we refactor our systems. Like for example, once we refactor our system stuff, iClient transport is probably just going to be turned into iTransport, brought into the base project um, along with our, oops, along with our client systems and our system factories and all that fun stuff. Because I really don't like the duplication of these classes between here on the client and there on the server. And it makes it very difficult to write the in-memory stuff. When I wrote the in-memory stuff that I showed you guys earlier, I had some sort of hacky code in there that made it work and uh, made it usable. But unfortunately, I decided against adding that in simply because once we refactor the systems code, it will no longer be hacky and we'll be able to test more things in memory outside of the server. So uh, now we go ahead and hit F6. 
and um, just go down the list of errors. So first of all, we have an error in our client, and that's because we changed the signature of our constructor and our connect. Uh, this is really simple to fix. We simply take these arguments out of the connect method, and for the constructor, we simply invoke a new uh, photon server connection, passing in those arguments there. So we just kind of move the responsibility of where it's connecting from the connect call into that. So um, let's go ahead and hit F6 one more time. And we see in-memory transport does not implement inner uh, member disconnect. Now this is going to be an interesting one because the in-memory transport, um, it uh, implements ice server transport, which I believe has a disconnect method on it. And the problem that's happening right here is we are, um, uh, where are you? Oh yeah, well, okay. Yeah, some weird stuff is going on. So we have some weird type issues going on. iServer transport requires that we have a disconnect method, a void disconnect method on our class. Client transport base used to provide a disconnect method that satisfied void disconnect no arguments, but now it doesn't because now it returns deferred, so now we're getting an error. To fix this, really the only way to do it is to go ahead and down here in our server transport region, we're going to add a implicit or an explicit interface implementation for the server transports uh, 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 disconnect method. So to do that, we'll simply do void iServer transport dot disconnect, and we'll simply leave it blank because we don't need anything in there. So now we can hit F6, and we have a successful build. So yeah, the only th other thing I want to point out is I did have to, actually we'll see this in the next video, so it doesn't matter, but I did have to recopy over some DLLs. I think I got my, my Photon version stuff out of date. If you, just a heads up, if you ever run into problems with uh, uh, Photon code throwing uh, exceptions internally in code that you don't have access to, uh, uh, one of the, the most common reasons for that is your client APIs are not the same version as the server that you're connecting to. But we'll do that in the next video because, again, somehow I got my version mis mis mix match, so I might as well show you guys how to fix that if that happens to you. But with that, I think that wraps this video up, and we'll see you guys in the next one. What are we doing in the next one? Uh, the next one, we are preparing the client. So finally, we'll be moving over the client, and everything is awesome. So, yeah, we'll see you guys then.